Today I'm joined by Jelle van Gorkum. Jelle is double Olympian 2012 and 2016. Yes. Silver medalist at the Rio Olympics in 2016 in BMX Supercross. Other most notable achievements, runner-up in the World Champs 2015. Yeah. Placing behind team na teammate Nicky Mann. Yes. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> too bad, too bad. And then you won the World Cup in Papendal 2013. Yes. And then a couple of World Cup podiums along the way yes. as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jelle has suffered a severe accident early 2018. 18, yes. And um, we speak about that a bit later, I guess. Yeah. Um, a bit of a personal story to that interview is I was thinking about doing interviews for a long time and um, I was thinking who's the first one I wanted to interview and uh, I thought that must be someone close to my heart so I wanted to interview you and I remember on our way to Papendal I asked you one morning and it was the day before you had the crash mm. and then I didn't do these interviews for a few months and then I thought okay but and also thought about not doing it at all. And then I thought it's not going to help Yella if I don't do the interviews. So mm. here we are. Yes. Welcome, Yella. Thank you. Let's get started. Nice to be here. Yella, what was your darkest moment? Uh, must be the accident I had last year. Must be. Yeah. And as an athlete? Uh, as an athlete, the, the time after the 2012 Olympics. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I noted that down as a later later as well as a question to you because i remember 2012 you went into the season very strong yeah you were very very good in the first races at yeah. the chula vista yeah and then you had that crash yes and that also meant that you the process of recovery took so long that your performance at the 2012 olympics was not Influence. what it should be yes yeah how did you recover from that the year after the olympics um, well, I first recovered physically, but then I had, rec had to recover mentally, because mm. that was maybe a bigger step than physically. Because mm. physically, at some point, you get to a point where you can do everything again, but mentally it's like um, you go there, but then at some point it stops, and then if you keep going, it will eventually come back, but it takes a long time to get back. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, <coughs> Looking at the recovery process now from early 2018 when you had your crash to now, everyone says they admire you for your mental strength. Hmm. Has that moment influenced you as well? I mean, the back in 12? Yeah, the experience you had coming back um, from that dark moment. Of course, it helped. Yeah. Yeah. Because it makes you realize that um, life is so much more than just, um, just sports. Because now I am in a phase that I cannot ride my bike anymore and I need to think about other goals in life. Hmm. What are these goals? Um, to return to life as good as possible. Hmm. Yeah. And hopefully one day squat around 200k again. I'll be there to support you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was your best moment? Mm. My best moment must be um, during the 2006 Olympics, but not in the main, but the race before the main. Mm -hmm. Because? Because I felt so strong back then. Mm. I could take on the whole world, I, bl I believed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And why do you think that was? Because um, I was physically in such good shape at that point, and mentally I was... Um, as much as prepared um, to take the win home. Yeah. Yeah. But eventually I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I've noted that down for a later point as a question, but I think it fits fits very well here. Mm. I mean, during the Olympic Games 2016, or I think from the outside, most people believed out of the three riders that went, you had the least chances. But you believed in yourself and also of course. in the event, yeah. your performance was really good, right? I yeah. think quarterfinal was 1-1-4, one, one, so two first places and then a fourth place. I think 1-1-6. Okay. 
and then semi-final also was good. Yeah. How did you do that? Um, I just kept believing in myself and I just pushed myself to, to get the best result I can get. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And then also one thing I noticed when we were training for the, the preparation for the Olympic Games, <coughs> um, when we were only training with the guys that went to the Olympics, um, I saw a bit of a change in you because normally you were always very present, very loud, but you tended to be more introvert and very, very focused. Mm. Do you remember that? I do. It was kind of a switch, so it was a bit of a different yellow for maybe, me. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But I think it comes out of the fact that I went through the same situation uh, four years earlier. Hmm. And I could place the, sit the situation I was in and I could take the benefits out of it so I can perform better in the future. Hmm. So if you could go back in time, 10-15 years, what advice would you give your younger you? Mm. Always wear a helmet. And um, don't always go as first down the hill, but always be the second guy. Don't go the first for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be the advice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So for the clarification, Yellow's accident was they went onto the BMX track hill. Starting hill. Starting hill yeah. to do a training. Yellow went down and there was a security chain and yellow went with 60, 70 kilometers an hour into that chain. Yeah. 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 So what are the habits that make you a successful athlete in person? Um, to be uh, somewhat grumpy and to be really um, on yourself. And what's eigenlijk? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Raymond asked me the same. Uh, what is Iron Weiss? Um, a little bit stubborn, maybe. maybe stubborn, like that. you want to do your own way or something yes. like that, right? Yes. Yeah. You always got to keep that um, eigenschap. Mm -hmm. Capacity. You, can always keep, you always need to keep that capacity to get the most out of your performance, mm. Mm. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also think one of the things that made you very special was you were a very good competitor, right? Very often you had better results in competition than yeah. what you expected yeah. from you in training. Yeah, I can imagine. Why was that? Because um, I need, as an athlete, I needed that, um, that little switch of competition. I needed it because I could give more of myself then. Hmm. Maybe a weird story, but I needed it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if I look back um, in our training sessions, you were always one of the people that the younger athlete looked up to. So kind of a leadership. I think it was also you're also strong at that, right? So being an example for younger athletes. Can be. I don't know. You gotta ask them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just try to do my best and try to support everybody as, as good as I can. Hmm. Hmm. I also remember that moment was in the Rio quarterfinals, I think the last, last quarterfinal, right? You let Nick, Nick pass so that hmm. he could get the point he needed to yeah. come to the final. Yeah. Hmm. That was pretty cool. Hmm. Hmm. But at some point you, you, you don't always do it on purpose, it just happens. But when it happened, you start to enjoy it a little bit. Hmm. And then after it, you can celebrate it together in, instead of yourself. Yeah. And I like that more than just for myself. Hmm. So that moment was on purpose when you let Nick pass? Well, Nick is just that talented, that he passed me. Hmm. <laughs> Cheers, Nick! <laughs> Oh, just for the record, this is not water, but it's gin tonic. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> Do you have a morning routine? Um, at this point or back, way Both. back? Uh, as an athlete and now? Um, as an athlete, I always had to wake up around like 7 o'clock in the morning and just start the day with a coffee, of course. 
and then uh, breakfast. After breakfast, I check my bag for all the stuff I need for training. Hmm. And then I check the road towards the, the uh, Olympic Training Center, if it's not too busy. Hmm. And then I go there. Hmm. But not really something special or something else. Okay. Oh, interesting, but yeah. you did that every day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for important moments, how did you prepare? I tried to sit back and get into myself, like really focused. Hmm. And just, just, I just needed myself and a little music. Hmm. And then I got to the zone where I can compete in. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting one, because normally you're very extrovert. Yeah. But to prepare, you become an introvert. Yeah. Interesting. I need to be like exactly in myself, hmm. so I can focus more. And how did you do that? Um, to sit back and just um, watch my breathing, hmm. and I just listen to um, motivated music. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And when did you start doing that? Around, around 2010, 2011. So leading up towards the games of 2012. Hmm. You develop that routine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. How do you overcome setbacks? Um, you got to look at it, but then also realize that um, you can just do everything you want to do, but then a little bit different. You got what I mean? Not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the gin tonic here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you overcome it because you look towards a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I get it. Because yeah. okay. you always got to have the, the picture of winning a race in your head, but also of a setback. And then you can put those two next to each other. And then you can you can learn out of the things that went wrong, and you can put it into a new goal. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you learn from the experiences. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. Okay. If I learn, it's a question, but I at least try to. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now the next one, I'm curious because um, let's see what your answer is. Who's your role model and why? Role model is a big word, but I look up to Sven Kramer. Mm -hmm. Because um, he's always at the point that he needs to be, like he's on a good level then. And he's always, he looks, always look, looks prepared. And um, I think that after his race, the way he looks at himself is really, is really analytic. Because if somebody asks him a question about his race, he can just immediately tell the whole story. Hmm. And I think that's good. That's a good frame. Hmm. Yeah. I remember somewhere, must be a few years back, 2012 or something. You wrote in the uh, friendship book for my son. Your role model is Muhammad Ali, and you wanted to be Olympic champion. Yeah, I remember that. I came close. You, you came Not close. close enough. Hmm. No, it's still Muhammad Ali, but that's more like a, a role model in life. Hmm. A role model in sport must be Sven Kramer. Okay. It always seems impossible until it's done. Yeah. That's a um, lifeline. No? Hmm. Yeah, we'll get that one here. So I'll leave it here. That one here, right? Yeah. So it has your number. Yes. Your number, then Jelle van Gorkum, and then it's. It always, always seems, seems impossible, impossible until it's done. Until it's done. Yeah. yeah. And Muhammad Ali did the same for you? Uh, Muhammad Ali came up with this sentence. Oh, I thought it's Nelson Mandela. Okay, it's Muhammad Ali? I think it's okay. Muhammad Ali. Hmm. What is the best advice you received and who gave it to you? Hmm. Best advice must be um, my coach, Pastor Bever. And it was when we were on training camp in Laguna Beach. Mm -hmm. It was on on the road, but it was a few that looked over the beach into the ocean. It was around four o'clock in the afternoon. And I didn't really enjoy what I was doing. And so he told me to take two steps back and just enjoy the moment. Mm. 
And I did that and everything changed afterwards. Mm. So that was good, a good, good motivation for me. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting, Merle mentioned the same. I spoke to Merle before and she also mentioned that Bas helped her to see, to enjoy the moment. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. So back in the days, how did a typical training day look like? Um, wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, then, of course, start with coffee. Um, then breakfast. And then go to Papendal. Then train from 9 o'clock in the morning until like 11, 11.30. Um, then have lunch at, at the center. And then in the afternoon start the training at 3 o'clock until 5 o'clock. And then go home. Then have dinner at home. And then have a relaxing time on the couch. And then go to bed. Mm. Okay, what time? Around... Uh, 10, 30, 11. Mm. Yeah. Good, eight hour, good eight hours of sleep. Yes. Yeah. I needed it. Yeah. I can relate to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to nominate someone to be interviewed? Um, that's a good one. I need to think about it. Take your time. But if I make this signal, it must be Dorian van Rijsselbergen. <laughs> so it's time for you to join this show. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you? I am on Instagram at Jelf Horkom. I am on Twitter at Jelf Horkom. And I also have a Facebook page yeah. and an uh, own website. Okay, it's jellefanhorkom.com. Yeah, okay. Cool, Jelle. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks.